chapter from my doctoral dissertation done seven years ago, but I have been keeping uh, watching um, the development in South Africa. And the other chapter I wrote is about Poland, and the, the third chapter is on Taiwan. And why group these three countries together? That is because the three countries has a long tradition of so-called formalistic conception of the rule of law. So uh, my concern is that how this kind of formalistic conception of rule of law impacts or have the influence upon the uh, democracy after uh, the authoritarian, uh, authoritarian regime or the apartheid. So this part is only um, focusing, I'm trying to focus on South Africa. And the, the formalistic rule of law I'm looking at is administrative justice or administrative law. And I guess um, the panelists here or uh, the participants here are more familiar with the history of South Africa than me. And so I would just uh, skip the uh, history part. And I try to focus on the constitutional making process Okay. Well, um, the effort to constitutionalize administrative justice started in early 19, uh, 1990s. Um, I think uh, the first wave is the interior uh, entry constitution, and the second one is the, the, finalize of, uh, the finalization of the 1996 constitution. And the last attempt is the 2000 uh, the PAJA, the Promotion Act, uh, Promotion of Administrative Justice Act of 2000 year. So um, following these three trends, um, I'm asking two questions. The first one is how the politics of constitution making affects the development of South African administrative law. This is uh, 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 the first question. And the second one is how the tension between administrative efficiency and accountability has pronounced itself in the post-transitional politics. So uh, the first one is more focused on law, and the second one is more focused on politics. So uh, if we are going to think about uh, the constitutionalization of the administra uh, administrative justice, uh, the first we should pay attention to is the ANC's Bill of Rights. It's, it's, uh, I guess it surprised everybody that uh, the ANC's Bill of Rights try to enumerate the grounds of review about uh, uh, administrative justice. They want to list the grounds, which only has four grounds. And the first one is abuse of power and non-delegated power, the, the traditional ultra virus uh, doctrine. And the third one is bad faith. And the, the, the last one is the notorious gross unreasonableness. So when they propose this kind of bill, uh, the Democratic Party actually um, were, was very unhappy about that. So they are trying to advocate the rights to administrative justice, which, which functions like the safety net. It can cap all kinds of grounds, not only the four listed, um, the four <coughs> enumerated grounds of review, so DP's uh, proposal is actually more encompassed, uh, more broad. And uh, so uh, when we look at the section 24 of the Inter uh, Interior Constitution, actually ANC compromise on this point. Uh, the art, uh, the section, uh, section 24 uh, actually goes like this the protection of a right to reasonable administrative action with conflict, uh, uh, this is the comments on the section 24, with co conflict with the doctrine of se separation of power. So ANC actually doesn't like this, uh, this kind of rights to administrative justice. And the compromise, uh, there are two compromises. The first one is that it is written, it's still written into the interior constitution. And the second one is that the section 33, which is very famous now, uh, would wait until the legislation, which is PAJA, um, then the section 33 would be, in, uh, would be um, become effectuated. Okay, so the problem is that uh, why would ANC concede? Or why would this compromise become possible? So 
basically, um, Elvisab's idea is that um, if we give uh, the, the nation a bit of rights, um, this is from Elvisab's uh, another article, we will have a long legacy of authoritarian regime to overcome. So since I don't have another time, <clears throat> I will just skip to the final conclusion. If we look at the legislative process about um, uh, Paja's definition of administrative action, uh, you will find that um, at the first stage, it doesn't look like this, but at the second reading process, uh, they adapt the German concept and also transplant Australian's um, uh, legislation into Paja. But that actually makes Paja become very, uh, very complicated. So I'll stop here. And if you have any questions, we can talk about that uh, in the Q&A section. Thank you very much.